Well, what a weekend it's been for warm weather across much of the UK and Ireland, but it is all changed today as rain. Heavy, persistent outbreaks of rain affect in many areas of the country, and uh, it looks as if low pressure will remain the dominant player. This very low here, seen by the current visible satellite imagery to the southwest of Ireland and the UK, that is the driving force behind this week's more unsettled weather in terms of temperature it is a good degree or several degrees in fact below what they were over the course of the weekend i think we did get up and exceed the 27 celsius mark yesterday in the southeast even here at marvogan weather hq the temperature reached a surprising 26.1 celsius here to the north of inverness and it was certainly glorious weather to enjoy a barbecue um <clears throat> on Saturday night, I must say. But uh, this is the uh, temperatures that were recorded during the course of yesterday. We had the uh, widespread mid to even upper 20s in uh, places between Birmingham and London, for example. It was cooler on the East Coast, only 14 degrees at Bridlington, as you can see here, 14.7 to be exact. And uh, <clears throat> it was also uh, relatively cool in Inverbervie, where it was only 11.1 Celsius, so a rather chilly day, to say the least, compared to the 23.5 at the uh, Altmahara. But uh, on Saturday, the temperatures were even warmer than this. I think yesterday's high was around 23.2 Celsius here at the house, compared to 26 on Saturday. <coughs> and these are the current temperatures, by the way. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the, these are the current temperatures uh, at the time of recording. So uh, still fairly pleasant at 21 Celsius at Altahara, but a, a considerably cooler at Tain Range where we've got an onshore breeze. Um, We've got uh, 20 uh, or 19.9 actually at Aviemore. Uh, only 14 Celsius, which is interesting at Gober Bank. 15.6 uh, actually it's showing, but um, uh, we also have uh, an 18 at Glasgow Airport. The uh, warmest conditions across the UK is actually eastern England, where you can see here a 22 Celsius at Weybourne. Uh, we've got a 21 at Donanook. Uh, still relatively cool at Bridlington on the uh, Yorkshire coast. And underneath the rain and cloud cover across the southwest, we've got temperatures stuck at 13 or 14 Celsius. Uh, looking at the current radar, um, as of the back at 5 p.m. on this Monday afternoon, you can see here we've got uh, a line of very heavy rainfall driving northwards, uh, especially across uh, you know Somerset uh, up into Wales. We've got uh, a very, very soggy day across this region of the country here, northwestern England, southwestern Scotland, and up the west coast. Now, here at the house, it's actually been... Uh, largely cloudy and uh, much fresher than the last couple of days but it stayed dry we did have some rain late last night into the early hours of this morning but that is the only rain that we have seen now i think what we will find is over the next day several days we will see outbreaks of rain uh, there's the center of the low here at 986 millibars seen by the the gfs model at 1500 utc this afternoon there's the heavy rain getting driven north, extending all the way back to central Portugal, that frontal system associated with the low. As we play through the next uh, several hours, you can see here that the rain kind of uh, tries to avoid the far north up here at, at my location. It looks as if uh, the rain doesn't really materialize much through the remainder of, uh, of today and even into tomorrow. Then we start to see um a little bit of a, a reprieve from the rain as the area of low pressure kind of sinks into biscay it then begins to fill so we start to lose the, the the depth of the low at least anyway and what we should start to see is uh, a little bit of a reprieve from the heavy persistent rain now there will be outbreaks of rain that continue to kind of uh, spiral around that center of low pressure especially when you've got the daytime heat and kicks in we've got the enhancement of showers and uh, local thunderstorms embedded within that day that circulation here but i think as we progress towards the, the end of the week and into the early portions of this weekend it looks as if we've got a very messy picture across northern iberia much of france possibly extend into the low countries but through central and even southern europe 
we've got quite a messy picture. Low pressure dominating, and it's very much low pressure across Central and Southern Europe, high pressure across the north of Europe here, and it will stay largely dry across the far north of the British Isles through you know, a decent chunk of this week, actually. As we move into the weekend, you can see that higher pressure tries to build once again from the north. We've got a predominant easterly airflow through uh, much of the second half of this work week and into the weekend. And uh, <clears throat> that area of low pressure kind of appears to try and regroup a wee bit, try and regain some sort of control over the UK atmosphere as we move towards the second half of the weekend. But this is obviously quite a long way out. Now, in yesterday's live stream, a busy weekend here in the channel, by the way. Did you see the interview with Scott McIntosh? the um, Deputy Director of the uh, National Centre for Atmospheric Research. He spoke to my moderator, Lisa Pattenden, for well over an hour, actually talked about solar science. That was released on uh, Saturday. And then yesterday we had the live stream. And uh, it's been a pretty pretty busy weekend for, for content. So <clears throat> if you're interested in all things weather, be sure to hit that like button. Share with your friends and family and subscribe to the channel. There is plenty more interesting content to come through the rest of this week. We will have um, episode three of Weather Talk released this upcoming Saturday. And I'm delighted to say that I got the chance to speak to somebody from the Met Office. And they will be in the that interview will be released, like I say, this upcoming weekend. But in, in yesterday's live stream, I meant to show you um, the NMME a total accumulated precipitation anomaly for the upcoming June period. So this is meteorological summer month number one. And you can see that it's actually indicating slightly wetter than average conditions, which is quite interesting. Temperature wise, this is the anomaly. So it looks as if uh, largely warmer than average across the majority of Europe, actually. <clears throat> Let's have a look and see what the, the, the CFSV2 is indicating. So this is the pressure pattern across a... Uh, across the continent really there's no indication of any distinct area of low pressure present here but incidentally like the NMME model it is indicating slightly wet than average conditions now what is interesting is it's actually showing a drier south wetter north if you look back at the upper air pattern you can actually see where it's indicating lower pressure up towards Iceland here so high pressure to the south but perhaps or southeast lower pressure to the north north east uh, west and therefore we may have uh, somewhat of an Atlantic influence more towards the northwest of the country. No surprise, really, the temperature anomaly is indicating warmer than average, and I do think that we are going to see uh, a warmer June than compared to average. Question mark is rainfall. Uh, is it going to be a wet month, or are we going to see a bit of a mixed picture uh, overall? So finally, let's uh, just uh, have a look at the CFSV2 weeklies. For the next uh, couple of weeks, and we've got the uh, this upper air chart for the upcoming seven day period here, and we've got that low pressure to the south, higher pressure to the north, so drier across the north, wetter across the south of the country here. Um, quite a, an interesting configuration here. Uh, quite a deep area of low pressure to the east. This is quite an, a classic omega block type situation seen by the CFSV two weeklies, with the block to the north, block over Central Europe and the, the, the twin lows either side of that. Looking at precipitation for the, the next seven days, you can see wet south, dry north, uh, and matches very nicely with the upper air uh, pattern overall. Looking at the uh, week two, so this is the period between the 20th and the, the, the 27th, you can see here that we dry things out over the UK and Ireland here, and this is part of the forecast that I've had, that we have this, return to more unsettled conditions, wetter than average conditions, but then we change back to drier once again as high pressure tries to build. So this is week two, then this is week three. You can see that the core of the high actually shifts slightly to the northwest of the British Isles here. Precipitation wise, this is obviously takes us out of the out of the month of May and into the first week of June. And it's showing drier than average conditions. Temperature wise, it's showing this warmer than average no real surprise there so that's it for today thanks for watching do check out all the content that was uh, published over the course of the weekend just gone the live streams there that you can check back if you missed it uh, 
Scott's interview on Saturday is available on the channel as well. So plenty of reason to stick around and hit that subscribe button. And I do uh, appreciate that very much. See you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.